Welcome to the Haskell Ring, the series where we solve programming problems, but you know, in Haskell. The next problem is a very, a very interesting. You will probably like it. The next problem is forming a magic square. We define a magic square to be an n by n matrix of distinct positive numbers from 1 to n square, where the sum of any row, column, or diagonal of length n is always equal to the same number, the magic constant. You will be given a 3 by 3 matrix S of integers in an inclusive range from 1 to 9. We can convert any digit A to any other digit B in the range from 1 to 9 at cost of absolute difference between A and B. Given S converted into a magic square at minimal cost, print this cost on a new line. The resulting magic square must contain distinct integers in the inclusive range from 1 to 9. So what's interesting about this particular problem, I think this is the first problem that we solve that is not easy, but rather a medium. And it's medium for a reason because you cannot just easily brute force that problem because uh, most of the problems we solved before we just brute force them we just go through all of the possible uh, you know combinations of or states of the model and just pick the one that is optimal but in this case brute forcing the solution is actually not gonna work because we have combinatorial complexity we have nine elements and uh, yeah what can we do in that particular situation. The first idea that I have, how many 3x3 three three magic squares you can have? So look closer. The size of the square is limited and the values of the elements are in the range from 1 to 9. So there should be a limited amount of magic squares with the size 3x3. Three three. So and naturally, let's, let's just try to Google that. Why not? Amount of 3x3 three three magic squares. Click in the first link and what we find, there are only eight possible magic squares with the size three by three. And even they are just rotations and reflections of only one pattern. There is only one true magic square three by three. The rest of them is reflections and rotations. And since we can limit the amount of magic squares to one, it's extremely easy to solve. It's medium because they never state that fact anywhere. Now you can brute force when you know that this is only one. As a side note, I'd like to mention that magic square is a pretty common mathematical puzzle and not something specific to this particular problem. The reason I decided to Google that is because figuring out all of the possible 3x3 three three magic squares is kind of outside of the scope of Haskell rank series. These series are more about teaching Haskell through solving simple programming problems in it and less about mental puzzle exercises. As an additional Haskell exercise, we could have tried to write a separate Haskell program that finds all of the possible magic squares among permutation of a list from 1 to 9, but I don't want to make this video too long. I can make a separate video about that if there will be any interest in the comment section. Additionally, I'd like to encourage you all to google more different stuff about magic squares and puzzles based on them. It's a pretty interesting topic. This is, by the way, the source of the complexity for most of the competitive programming problems. Most of the competitive programming problems are hard not because you have to know some special algorithm or anything like that, there's some information that makes it really difficult to solve because without that information, you think you have to brute force everything. But once you know that simple piece of information, it actually reduces the scope of the problem like dramatically. All right. So I think the first thing we have to do, we have to generate all of the possible magic squares. I think the easiest way to represent a magic square would be the list of list of integers. And since we're gonna use that type many times throughout the program, I would like to assign a type synonym and call that thing a square. So and what we wanna have, we wanna have all of the possible uh, magic squares. So what we could do, we could just retype all of them, all eight of them, and just call it a day. But uh, I think it's pretty tedious. So I would like to somehow generate all of the magic squares from one single true magic square. And that magic square, we are going to just retype there. Eight, one, six, three, five, seven, four, nine, two. So you can generate all of the possible magic squares by rotating this magic square 
and reflecting it. To do that, let's create a several operation. Let's create an operation that rotates a magic square by 90 degrees and reflects the square horizontally. So how can you rotate a square by 90 degrees. So let's actually try to discover that playing with the magic square in the ripple. The problem with playing with magic square in the ripple is that it's not readable. So ripple basically prints it uh, as a straight line. So I want to implement a simple function that pretty prints the square like so. So this function takes a square and produces a side effect where it just prints that. What we need to do, since square is a list of list of integers, I want to map each an individual row. So basically square, you can consider square is a list of rows. So I want to map each row and inside of each row, I want to map each element, making it a string. After that, since I have a list of strings, I want to join them separating by spaces. And now I have a list of strings, which I can then join separating by new lines. And after that, I can just print that thing like so. And if I apply PP to magic, it will just print it a little bit better. How about that? So how can we rotate a matrix 90 degrees? For that, I believe uh, in data list module, we have a pretty interesting function, which is called transpose. This particular function takes a list of list of elements and returns a list of list of elements, which kind of looks like our functions. Well, they also take list of list of elements and return list of list of elements, since square is a list of list of integers. So let's take a look what is going to happen to a magic square if we transpose it. So it actually transposes the matrix. You see, it took its rows and turned them into columns. We had 816 as a row before, and now we have it as a column. And it does that for each row. But this is not really a rotation. That's the problem. It's not really rotation by 90 degrees. To make it an actual rotation after transposing, we have to reverse each an individual row. We have to reverse each an individual row to make it actual 90 degrees uh, translation. So the easiest way to do that is to map each row with the reverse. And this is how it's going to look like. So this is the original magic square and this is the rotated 90 degrees. You see that this row became this column and the entire thing is rotated. So what that means, that means to implement rot 90, we have to transpose and map reverse. And after that, we're gonna be able to just rotate matrix several times. Yeah, you see? Uh, 90 degrees rotation. So now we need to implement the reflection. And I think we already saw a reflection when we were playing with transpose. If you take a closer look, uh, transpose actually reflect the matrix by its diagonal. So that means to implement reflection, we just have to transpose. That's it. But the problem with the separation, we need to apply a rotation 90 degrees several times. We could do that like we already did, just apply it manually, but it's not really convenient. I really wish I could just have some higher order function that could do that for me. And as a matter of fact, such a higher order function exists. It's called iterate. Let's take a look at it. It takes a function from A to A, basically transforms some particular element. Then it takes element of such type and returns a list of this element. So what it does essentially, if you have function f and some element 5, it returns you a list of 5, f of 5, f of f of 5, f of f of f of 5, and so on indefinitely. So we can use this function to rotate magic square indefinitely. But we don't need all of the rotations because it's going to repeat itself after the fourth one. So what we need to do, we need to take a four rotation from that list and we're going to end up with just four magic squares that are the rotation of the original one. This is how we generate first four magic numbers, but it's only first four of them. We need to generate the last four. And the last four uh, magic numbers is pretty much the same, but reflected, like so. So we generate four rotations of the original magic square, then four rotations of the reflected magic square, and we end up with eight magic squares. And this is how you can easily generate all of the possible magic squares, just like that. There are only eight of them. 
All right, so the scope of brute forcing for this particular problem is actually eight magic squares. So what we have to do, we have to take the input square and just calculate the distance between that input square and all of the possible magic squares and pick the one with the smallest distance. So to do that, we need to uh, somehow calculate the distance. So let's create a function that takes a square, another square, and calculates the distance between them. So distance uh, actually... I just realized that they don't define the notion of distance. They define the notion of cost. And the notion of cost is the replacements. So basically the absolute difference between the replaced elements. Uh, so we can easily calculate that if we take all of the elements, all of the corresponding elements of two squares, calculate the uh, absolute difference between them and just sum them up. So let's do the following thing. Let's take these two squares. And the problem is that the squares are least of least of numbers so it's not really easy to calculate absolute differences between them unless we concatenate them together and straighten them up so to do that we're going to use a function concat which takes uh, the list of list of uh, numbers uh, actually it takes a foldable of list but we shouldn't care about that uh, what's important is that we can use this function to just straighten up something that is not straight that sounds horribly wrong um so we're gonna concat s1 then concat s2 and we're going to zip with a difference and on top of that we're gonna map that difference with the absolute value and once we have list of absolute differences we're gonna just sum them up and that will calculate the distance between two squares all right so we have a distance and i think after we have all of the tools in place it's time to create a final solution final solution is going to take this square and return the minimal cost to turn that square into a magic square so what we're gonna do is map all of the magic squares with a distance to s which will turn this into a list of all possible distances between the input square and all of the magic squares and what we have to do we have to pick the minimal one and that's it that's the solution but as usual we need to wrap it into an interactive program that we can submit to the system in this case we can easily use interact and what we're going to do so the input is just a square so we need to separate it by lines then separate by words and turn it into a list of list of numbers let's quickly do that separate by lines separate by words turn into numbers and here we have a list of list of numbers which we can pipe through solve and solve returns integer and we need to turn it into a string and this is the final solution that we can try to submit to the system it's actually a pretty big one but this is like we have a couple of redundant things we could have just removed pp and inline square but it's not really that important i think this solution is good as it is so let's check if it works on their site. Hopefully it does. Okay, so it works and let's submit that finally. And yeah, next uh, problem. Next problem.